Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and for the first iOS-based video of 2022, we're waiting for the release of 15.3 to the public. We've only had iOS 15.3 Beta 1 for a couple weeks at this point, and we're waiting for Beta 2 and then a final release. And so I want to talk about its overall experience since I've been running it full-time that entire time on my iPhone 13 Pro Max and my iPad Pro. I also have it on the iPhone 11 and 15.2 on the iPhone 10. And so I thought I'd talk about the experience after the past couple of weeks, why there might be something else such as iOS 15.2.1 and talk about some of the comments and things you had to say based off the YouTube community poll that I started 10 days ago. So there's been additional comments to that and additional votes. And the first thing has to do with a small change I hadn't mentioned before. So I wanted to share it with you. Now I haven't been able to verify that it's a hundred percent new based off of the previous versions, but it's something I hadn't seen before. Now this is thanks to a user who sent this in chippy on Twitter here. And what it is, is if you're using the app offload option, which allows you to offload apps, you're not using that often to free up some space without uninstalling them. You can see those in your app library. If you scroll down, here's one here, Adam, where you have a little iCloud icon next to it. And in order to install that again, you can just search for an app. Maybe you're looking for an app. You're trying to remember what it is, search for the word Adam, and you'll see it appears here in your spotlight search. Now you can just tap on it and it will download automatically when you tap on it and show you that status right here in the spotlight search. So you'll see it's installing Adam. It's taking just a moment and then it's installed like normal, just like any other app, but it's just a nice little animation and a quick shortcut to show you to do that instead of going to the app store and downloading it again. I hadn't seen that. So thanks for sending that in. If you've seen that before, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Now, as far as battery life, I thought we'd jump right into that. Since I've been using this for two weeks full time, let's go into settings and take a look at the battery life. Now on my 13 Pro Max, I have 100% battery health, and that's just because it's a newer phone. I charge it every night, as many of you know, and here's the last 10 days or so of the overall usage. So you can see it varies from day to day with the holidays and everything else. Yesterday, I had two hours and eight minutes of screen on time, seven hours and 22 minutes of screen off time, and you'll see my music was using a lot of background activity. I think this drained my battery much quick, more quickly than it should have. And you'll see that as a bug within 15.2 and it still remains a bug in 15.3 it appears. So I have 50% usage with just about two hours. So that's definitely an issue if you're using that. And based off the different days, battery life has been okay. It really varies from day to day. As you can see here, I had five hours and four minutes and then seven hours and six minutes of screen off time and used just over 50%, maybe 60%. So average, I would get 10 to 12, maybe 14 hours of screen on time on this phone, depending on the day. And if I'm not using music, it seems to help a lot. So either way, I typically go to bed with around 50%. Once in a while, it will be much lower just because of some odd music bugs with it using up battery life in the background. So it seems to be pretty good. And battery life on my iPad is really hit or miss. It was great when I first got it. Now on the iPad, we'll wait for it to rotate. There we go. Under settings, under battery, we'll let it load and you'll see that it was last charged to 100% well yesterday at 2:21 a.m. so over 24 hours ago at this point and as you can see I'm down to 39% at this point. It seems to drain a lot, even when you're not doing anything. And based off the past couple of days, I've used it about two, well, two hours, two and a half hours, maybe three hours total with screen on time. And it's using over half the battery. When I got this and it was new, I could easily get eight to 10 hours of screen on time. Now I'm lucky if I get five to six. So I hope they update this. It was improved with the previous public release, but then it went back down again with the the betas. And that's some of the issues you come across with a beta. So it's just something to know. So I thought we'd talk about iOS 15.3 beta two and the final release and when to expect that first, then we'll talk about stability, remaining bugs, and then the community poll and comments. Now I went back three years to see what Apple had done as far as taking vacation for the holiday and then when they resumed pushing out updates. And so back in 2019, Apple released iOS 12.1.3 beta four on January 10th, 2019. Then in 2020, on January 14th, they released iOS 13.1.1 beta two. And then last year on January 13th, they released iOS 14.4 beta two. And so based off of that, if we take a look at the calendar, that means this week, I would not expect any sort of update. 
I would expect an update the following week since Apple has vacation this week or not all employees are back working on software or other things. And so based off of that, I would expect an update as soon as the 10th or 11th with beta two. So we should have some sort of update next week based off of that. Apple of course is free to change this up like they can any day, but based off of the last three years, that's what I would expect. Then I would expect a final release before the end of the month. Now, the reason I say this is because Apple has been talking about bringing out digital ID that they've talked about where you can use your phone as a wallet to carry not only your credit cards, but now your digital ID and Apple's been working with the federal government in the United States for the TSA. So you can use it in airport checkpoints. Apparently they're going to start this in February with a couple different airports with supporting states. Now my state's not supporting it, so I can't try it out, but maybe it will in the future. But either way, you may be able to use that or your Apple watch to get through a TSA checkpoint in the U S. So based off of that, that's supposed to begin in February. If they're going to do that in February, we need an update either before then or in the first weeks of February. So I would expect to public release of some sort in the next three weeks or so at that point. So based off of that information now in the interim, because there's some remaining bugs going on, we may have a 15.2.1. I doubt that, but it's possible. And the reason I say that is there's some noise cancellation issues with the iPhone 13. When you're on a voice call, you just don't have noise cancellation going on. It's still there on other phones, such as the iPhone 11, but it's not there with the 13 for many people. So that needs to be resolved and then they'll fix that as well as a reception issue that seems to happen with certain carriers in Korea or South Korea. So that's a known issue that many people have mentioned to me where you just can't place phone calls. And even the carriers are handing out older phones, such as iPhone 12 series devices. So people can make phone calls without them dropping. So it's a known issue that Apple's working on. And so based off of that, we could see an update before the final release of 15.3, or they could just fix it all at once with that update. Also, there's a known issue on 8.3 for watch OS. So if you have watch OS 8.3 and a series seven Apple watch like this one here, some people are seeing issues with charging. Now I haven't seen that. I put it on the charger at night. I'm at 98% currently, but some people are having issues where it just doesn't charge properly or charges incredibly slowly. And so Apple could push out a watch OS 8.3.1 based off of that to resolve that issue. That doesn't mean they'll release iOS 15.3 at the same time, since they're sort of releasing them at odd times now. So we definitely could see some sort of update with that. And so other than those two things though, iOS has been much more stable with iOS 15.2 that I have on the iPhone 10 here. It seems to be pretty good. There is some issues that some people mention as far as battery life and more, but overall it's much more stable than earlier versions of iOS 15. 15.3 is looking a lot better though, at least in my experience, there are still bugs that remain. So there's a storage bug that storage bug still happens for quite a few people where it's reporting the wrong amount of storage for your phone or storage isn't loading quickly. Like it just loaded here. Storage sometimes would use additional maybe space on your phone that doesn't make sense. Or if you go down, it's using a lot of system data from time to time. It's not calculating it properly for me. Sometimes that takes a little bit, but most people are having good experiences with this and the storage bug isn't there, but some people do have that issue. Additionally, there's some issues with Bluetooth. People are having some issues with third party headphones where Bluetooth just doesn't connect properly or disconnects a lot. Thankfully with AirPods, I'm seeing a good connection. The same is true with beats. So if you're using beats or anything else, they seem to stay connected without, without a problem, but there are some Sony headphones. People have mentioned that seem to be an issue for some. So why people are having that issue. We're not sure. Apple does seem to have fixed Bluetooth for most people though. Wi-Fi seems to be pretty solid as well. I haven't had any issues there, but I have had issues with cellular connectivity and switching between 5g and 4g and Wi-Fi. And I think that's because the modem update is actually an older version with this version, as opposed to 15.2. I've had issues because of that specifically, but it seems much better overall with everything else. Additionally, some people are having issues with CarPlay that they've mentioned. So CarPlay seems to be the least stable thing these days where it just disconnects. Now that could be because your manufacturer needs to update their head unit in the car and fix that. Or maybe there's some other issues that Apple changed in the code that's causing in incompatibility and those to drop. Hopefully they resolve them very soon. 
Now, as far as any additional issues, there doesn't seem to be a ton of them. So I thought we'd take a look at the community poll and some of the comments. So there's been additional comments. I made this poll live 10 days ago, and you'll see 13% of you are on 15.3 beta one. 73% of you are sticking with the public release right now. 3% of you are using 14.8.1 or older. 2% are on 13.7 or older. And 9% are using Android. I think that went up two points from the last time I looked at this. Now there's been 287 comments total. And if we sort by new, we'll take a look at just a few of them here. And you'll see Nuzhath Sultana. Hopefully I said that properly. Yes, I do have some issues with 15.3 beta one where my voice calls is not reaching other people and their voice is not reaching me. So whether that's with the microphone or noise cancellation and other issues, there's definitely some issues there. Alfonso Lana says iOS 15.2 on iPhone 13 pro, no problems. In fact, these two iOS and iPhone 13 pro, Pro are the dynamic duo. I'm extremely happy with my new phone. Evelyn updated to 15.3 beta one recently using it on my 13 pro max, which is my daily driver. Some app crashes here and there and battery life after 40% seems to drop very quickly. The overall experience is smoother than the other versions, especially with ProMotion. And that's one thing I didn't mention in this video. ProMotion is super smooth. It's so smooth. I don't really notice it anymore. It just is a smooth experience when you're scrolling all the time. So they've definitely improved that. I know some people have said, I've mentioned that a lot in different videos, but it's true that they have improved it greatly with 15.3. Anthony Fisher, I'm using iOS 15.2 on my iPhone 12 and no issues and it works how it should and I haven't had any lag and it's very fast. Scott Strong, running iOS 15.3 beta one on iPhone 13 Pro and I have zero complaints about function. Like Aaron, I think Apple is overdue giving this an overhauled look and feel. Command center and icons are all quite tired. I definitely agree with that. Haley Wilson said everything on iOS 15.3 is running good. The only bug I see is when I make a FaceTime call, it suddenly drops Wi-Fi and goes to 5G. But apart from this, I'm not seeing anything else. For me, it seems to be under the hood improvements. And I do think we'll see a few different changes with maybe beta two, where we'll see more features. Roger says I'm running iOS 15.3 beta one on my iPhone 12 pro max, no noticeable bugs or lagging apps open and run smoothly. Battery life has not had any issues. I am Han said iPhone eight iOS 15 beta three. I think you mean 15.3 beta one and battery life is very good in general use. Everything runs fine. Shortcuts, however, still have many bugs. Unfortunately, Paul Turner, I was on 15. 15.3 beta one, and it was doing strange things with a variety of apps and functions. So went back to 15.2. I still wish 14.8.1 was still signed. Tim Arvin running iOS 15.3 beta one on an iPhone 12 pro max. Haven't experienced any issues. Also have the beta for the Apple watch seven. No issues either. All has been smooth sailing for me. Abdullah SZ, since this 15.2 update on my iPhone 10, I've been noticing having noticeable battery drain. Apple pay lag and the phone heat up whenever I'm streaming music. Previous updates were okay though. And that goes back to the Apple music bug where Apple has said that actually streaming music with Apple music can cause additional CPU usage, which in turn will affect battery. So it will bring that battery down much more quickly than you would just using it normally like you would before. So Apple definitely needs to fix that bug as they mention it's specifically a problem in 15.2 still. And so that's everything with 15.3 beta one. Hopefully we see an update maybe this week if they change the way they're doing things, but I think it will be another week or so. But if there's anything else you've been experiencing with 15.3 or 15.2, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.